Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So as we are talking about the particle separation by different mechanism and their respective equipment, how those equipments can be designed and what are the governing equation to calculate the efficiency of that equipment for the separation of the particulate matter. And uh, in the previous uh, lecture we were discussing about that how that particulate material can be uh, separated by gravity uh, settling chamber. Here another mechanism in this lecture we will be discussing uh, and this uh, you know mechanism is called that particle separation by you know cyclone and centrifuge. How that cyclone and centrifuge uh, actually working for the separation of the particulate materials will be discussed in this lecture. So, uh, if you if we uh, if we talk about that cyclone separator for separation of the particles, you'll see that this cyclone separator utilizes the centrifugal force that created by the spinning gas stream. Here, in this slides, it is shown that animation. There, how that particles are being you know separated just by spinning that particle laden gaseous stream in this you know system. And there, uh, particles is uh, you know that acted on by a centrifugal force of uh, you know measurement like this. If you have that particle mass and its velocity at this centrifugal and in the at this radial direction, and uh, what radius of curvature this uh, you know involved to rotate or you know centrifuge that if you know and if it is denoted by small r then. Uh, this centrifugal force can be calculated by this equation that is called mp v theta square by r. So, a particle uh, uh, is acted on by this centrifugal force of mp v theta square by r and the gas uh, whatever it is flowed uh, is forced to flow that uh, curved geometry of that you know uh, system. Uh, you know through that curved geometry that particles should be acting upon to uh, get that centrifugal force and uh, whenever that centrifugal force of uh, you know particles uh, you know will be you know effective on that particle you will see that that particles will thrust on that wall of that centrifugal uh, uh, you know separator that is called cyclone separator and uh, when it will uh, thrust on that uh, wall you will see that uh, it will uh, reduce its you know that uh, uh, you know movement or uh, you can say that uh, it will diminish its uh, you know uh, flow on the surface just by getting that obstruction and uh, after getting that obstruction you will see that particles will go downward uh, as per their gravity. So, the gas flow is forced to follow that curved geometry and during that uh, you know geometry you will see that the inertia of the particles causes them to move towards the outer well, outer wall where they collide and you know collect it on the surface of the wall. Okay. So, here in this you know uh, the cyclone separator it is shown that uh, that uh, dusty air will be inlet into the you know cyclone separator and then it is getting that you know uh, inertia particles that uh, which causes uh, to move towards the outer wall of the uh, cyclone. And then uh, after getting that you know uh, change of that you know inertia at the wall the particles will fall down due to their gravity effect. So, this is the basic mechanism of cyclone separator. Also, you will see that at a typical uh, value of that you know uh, radial velocity that is around c that 10 meter per second or uh, the radius of uh, 0 0.5 meter, the force uh, will be around the 20.4 times that of gravity on the same particle. So, in that case the gas stream may execute that several complete you know turns as it moves uh, from one end. Uh, of the device to the other. So, in that case the length of the body of the cyclone uh, will be related through the gas flow rate to number of turns which should be executed by the gas stream. So, in this case the design problem uh, sometimes will be you know uh, posed in terms of that computing the number of turns that takes by that you know uh, gaseous stream and also uh, the particles which is coming with that gaseous streams and that actually give you the effective you know 
cal uh, you know uh, predicted value or calculated value of that efficiency of that you know equipment and that efficiency can be regarded as a collection efficiency so in that case uh, it will be required to you know uh, uh, you know uh, interior uh, surface be smooth uh, uh, to get that smooth surface so that the collected particles uh, may slide easily uh, uh, down the wall as per that gravity. So this is the case. So here uh, we can say that there will be certain you know uh, factor that will affect on that you know efficiency of that you know cyclone separator to separate those particles. Uh, especially that geometry is one of the important uh, you know factor and then also you can say that the particle size that all particle size uh, uh, cannot be separated by this you know cyclone separator you will see that uh, there will be a certain range of that particle size to be separated where that the inertia will be produced by that cyclic turn of that gaseous streams whenever that inertia will be you know uh, uh, you know uh, that uh, diminishes on the surface by heating or just by you know colliding with that particles with that wall then those will be falling downward as per gravity so in this case uh, that particle size also one of the important whether this inertia will be more enough uh, to that you know gravity force or not so whenever it will be you know turning uh, up uh, in the centrifugal action so in that case uh, that gravity force will not be uh, that higher uh, compared to that inertia force initially after you know that uh, getting stuck on the wall of course that gravity force will be acting on the particle to you know uh, slide down alongside of the wall now you'll see that uh, whenever we are talking about the design of that you know uh, the cyclone separator there are uh, uh, basic uh, three types of that you know uh, uh, cyclone separator will be uh, designed and in this case uh, uh, some will be called that reverse flow cyclones uh, some will be called as straight through flow uh, cyclones and also another important design specifically uh, you know uh, that is impeller based you know cyclone separator will be there so in this case uh, we can say that in case of reverse flow cyclones uh, the particles are actually forced to wall by centrifugal force and then fall down the wall due to gravity at the bottom of that cyclone you will see that the gas flow uh, reverts to form an inner core that uh, you know leaves uh, at the top of the unit and the gas is introduced down the axis of the cyclone so this is very important that whenever we are talking about that reverse flow cyclone so in this case uh, you will see uh, that uh, gas uh, uh, flow uh, will be you know reverse to that you know uh, direction of the you know uh, particle laden gas stream so clean gas will be you know reversely flow in the cyclone so here you'll see that in the you know uh, diagram it is shown that the red line it shows that that due to this centrifugal force action uh, that the direction of this you know gaseous stream with particle how it will be you know uh, you know uh, 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 directing and then after separation of those particles you will see that the clean gas will be you know passing through the core region of this you know cyclone separator so here uh, you will see that the uh, clean gas will be you know reversely flow compared to that you know uh, dirty air here so this is the basic concept that particles are forced to wall by you know uh, centrifugal force and then uh, fall down the wall due to the gravity and at the bottom of that cyclone the gas flow reverses to form an inner core that is inner core here this is inner core that leaves at the top of the unit so this is the basic you know principle of reverse flow cyclones whereas straight through cyclone uh, you will see that uh, the inner vortex of uh, air that uh, leaves at the bottom instead of you know uh, leaves at the top so in this case uh, here uh, reverse direction will not happen so the steep advantage of this unit uh, that the it will ha it will it will give you that uh, low pressure drop and high volumetric flow rates whereas uh, impeller type collectors or you know separators there in this case uh, gases enter uh, normal to a many bladed impeller you can say that and are uh, swept out by the impeller 
uh, that around uh, its circumference as shown in the you know uh, picture here here surrounding uh, you know the circumference you will see that particles will be you know moving downward and these particles will be thrown into uh, an annular slot that around the periphery of that devices and then the principal advantage of this you know unit is that uh, you know uh, this actually unit is very compact in nature you can say that all the you know accessories to be you know design in such way that it will be give you that compact design of this uh, separator and then uh, before uh, assessing that you know uh, that cyclone separator for its uh, particular size of that particles to be separated in this case you have to assess those that uh, you know particle separation based on its that efficiency of that cyclone now to determine that uh, collection efficiency uh, consider a particle that entering the cyclone as shown in the figure here uh, at you know r is equal to r3 at any position you will see that if particles here in this cyclone uh, separator inside that cyclone separator here you will see that this is the uh, you know uh, schematic of this you know uh, cyclone separator or you can say that some view uh, you know uh, the top view of this you know cyclone separator and half of this you know cyclone separator the top view we can show here so at a uh, r radial position at r is equal to r3 here suppose this particle is there so in this case uh, we can say that uh, at this uh, r is equal to r3 the the particles will strikes uh, the wall at theta is equal to theta f where is that uh, theta here uh, theta uh, is equal to theta f this is the theta here uh, so at r uh, here this is the r position here and theta uh, how does it make uh, that angle here at any r position here so the particles velocity component at this uh, location anywhere suppose here if we consider the particle uh, hits outer wall at this position at theta is equal to theta f so in this case what are the uh, basic components of that velocity of these particles uh, then you can say that uh, there will be two components at this you know that will be one is the v theta and another one will be your you know v r so the radial velocity component is the terminal velocity of the particle when acted on by the centrifugal force fc so here on this particles there will be a force acting that is called uh, centrifugal force so this centrifugal force will be uh, having two components because of this you know one is uh, radial component of this velocity of this particle and also theta component of this uh, particle velocity so in this way that particles will be you know moving inside the and after that uh, uh, you have to assess what will be the you know radial velocity that radial velocity can be calculated by this equation one it is uh, given uh, here uh, is basically you know that this is the uh, terminal velocity uh, based on this you know uh, centrifugal force so it is fc is equal to vr into 3 pi mu dp this is your terminal velocity so v theta uh, uh, vr can be calculated from this uh, you know centrifugal force and v theta is basically the uh, actual that radial velocity here in this case so that can be calculated from this you know volumetric flow rate and also its you know cross sectional area so based on which you will see that uh, uh, we can get this you know v theta after derivation from its geometry we are having this equation number 2 that is q by w r into ln r2 by r1 what is that r2 and r1 r2 is you know that your outer diameter outer radius of this uh, uh, centrifugal uh, separator and this here this is the inner uh, core uh, radius of this you know centrifugal separator and then uh, uh, you will see that uh, that fc that fc how you can calculate this fc so fc will be equal to mp to v theta square by r and this is basically what pi by 6 rho p dp cube this is the uh, you know uh, mass of that particle and v theta uh, square by r there uh, that is theta component velocity at the radial direction and also you can say that uh, you will see that uh, after substitution of this you know vr and v theta here uh, uh, basically that v theta so we can get this equation number three and uh, in this case vr also can be calculated after substitution of this you know uh, 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 velocity of uh, you know uh, centrifugal uh, sorry value of centrifugal force 
from this equation number 3, then we are getting this Vr that is radial velocity here. So, W is here uh, you know uh, width, dp is the particle diameter, u is the velocity and q is the volumetric flow rate and rho p is called that you know density of the particle. So, in this case we can say that uh, 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 the particles will be uh, having the uh, radial component as Vr as you know rho p q square dp square by 18 mu r, r cube w square into ln r2 by r1 whole square whereas uh, v theta will be as per equation number 2. So, from this uh, you know velocity component and what will be the that uh, centrifugal force that also can be calculated based on this equation number 3. After that uh, you can uh, calculate what will be the trajectory of a particle in the cyclone and in this case uh, uh, you have to calculate what will be the distance that is traveled in the theta direction in a time interval dt. So, for a certain you know time you are going to operate this you know cyclone let it be uh, considered here uh, as uh, time is dt. So, for that time interval uh, in the theta direction how much distance that uh, particles can be uh, you know uh, particles can be you know moved or uh, particles is moving there. So, it will be uh, v theta into dt this is basically r into d theta. Also the distance the particle moves in the r direction uh, in time dt that will be equal to dr is equal to vr dt. Then over a time interval dt r d theta by v theta that will be equal to dr by vr. So, this is the from geometry you can easily uh, obtain and uh, also from this relation we can have this you know uh, uh, equation here r d theta by dr that will be equal to v theta by vr. Thus by you know dividing that v theta and vr we are getting this uh, equation number 4. And then we can represent this equation number 4 as by d theta by dr that will be equal to you know as shown in the equation number 5. So, if the particle enters the device at r is equal to r 3 and uh, hits the outer wall at a theta is equal to theta f then uh, after integration of this equation number 5 we can have uh, this theta f is equal to 9 mu w ln uh, into r2 by r1 uh, divided by rho p q into dp square into r2 square minus r3 square. Here r3 here as shown in the picture uh, what is the r3 and what is the r2 it is shown in the uh, you know diagram here uh, and then uh, r3 will be from this equation number 6 can be obtained and which can be represented by uh, equation number 7 as like this. So, here basically uh, we can say that uh, this r3 distance whenever the particles will be uh, uh, initially at this position at r3. So, that r3 can be you know uh, calculated based on that you know geometry of this you know cyclone separator and also other physical properties uh, and also geometry of the cyclone. So, here how that r2 and r3 at a position of that particles from its you know that you know outer wall or outer wall diameter or radius how it will be related that can be obtained by this equation number 7. And then after getting this r3 value at a particular time at what position that particles will be there and what is the r3 value if we know this from this you know r2 r3 and r1 and r2 we will be able to calculate what will be the collector efficiency okay, or separator efficiency or it is called the collection efficiency. If the entering particle concentration and gas velocity are uniform across the cross section then ideal case we can say that the collection efficiency can be uh, represented by the fraction of the particles in the uh, you know entering flow that the outer wall before theta is equal to theta f. Okay. So, at theta is equal to theta f what will be the efficiency that will be you know depending on the time whereas before that theta is equal to theta f at a particular location the initially you will see that uh, uh, when that particles in the entering flow you know uh, entering flow what will be the fraction of that particles that fraction 
uh, will give you that you know efficiency of that collection okay so in that case that efficiency can be you know related to that you know geometry at position of that particles as well as other you know geometry of the system so that can be you know expressed by this equation number 8 so eta will be equal to r2 minus r3 divided by r2 minus r1 so if we substitute the value of r2 r3 and r1 r3 already we obtained by equation number 7 here okay so in this case if we substitute this r3 value here okay so eta can be calculated or it can be simplified which can be represented by this equation number 9 after simplification you will get this and from this equation 9 uh, you can easily calculate what will be the collection efficiency now this collection efficiency then depends on that geometry of the system and also you will see that there will be a particle size particle density and flow rate of the gas also at what position that particles there that also will be affecting on this efficiency of the collection suppose that you are getting that 100 percent efficiency in your ideal case so the particles will be located at what position that means at what value of theta or uh, you can say that at what value of r3 okay that particles will be uh, you know positioned so that their efficiency of the collection will be 100 percent so in that case we can calculate it from this equation number 9 so there if we substitute that eta will be equal to 1 that means 100 percent efficiency and then uh, you know r3 will be equal to r1 okay so in that case theta f can be calculated from equation number equation number 9 as here it will be as 9 mu w ln into r2 by r1 divided by rho p q dp square into r2 square minus r1 square okay so at this theta a value you can get ideal you know cyclone separator which give you that 100 percent efficiency for separation of the particles that means all the particles will be separated by this cyclone separator for a particular operating condition and that condition that theta f will be is equal to this as per equation number 10. Now if we consider that at this 100 percent efficient system of this cyclone separator so what will be the centrifugal force and if we compare with the you know gravitational force then we can have this you know factor of this centrifugal force okay in terms of you know the gravitational force so that ratio that centrifugal force to the gravitational force can be obtained from this equation number 11 okay so after simplification of this you know substitution of fc and fz value at this 100 percent efficient condition we are having this you know the ratio of the centrifugal force to the gravitational force so from this ratio you can say whether it will be greater than one or less than one if suppose this fc by fz is uh, more more than one then you can say that the centrifugal force will be more effective compared to the gravitational force there so that is why you can say that particles will be having the enough rotation uh, speed or you can say that have a, having enough you know uh, inertia so that it will thrust on the wall and after you know reversing that thrust the gravitational force will be acting on the particle so in that case that centrifugal force also to be designed or to be normalized in such way that the what will be the material strength of that wall that also to be considered there also that uh, what will be the you know a uh, smoothness factor of that wall that also important so accordingly that centrifugal force to be designed based on that you know gravitational force so 
based on this you know ratio you have to design that system where you have to maintain that fc will be far far you know more than gravitational force now coming to that uh, another point that what are the factors basically effect on that cyclone collection efficiency one is told that particle size another will be you know that particle density and what will be the inlet gas velocity cyclone body length number of gas revolutions is important and smoothness of the cyclone wall also you will see that other factors like what is the diameter of that cyclone and also what will be the you know gas outlet duct diameter that means through which that gas will be you know entering to that you know cyclone what will be the cross sectional area of that you know duct or what will be the hydraulic radius or hydraulic diameter of that duct that should be known and that will affect on that you know collection efficiency also uh, what will be the gas inlet area that is basically coming as that whether it is cross sectional area or uh, whether it is a hydraulic uh, diameter to be considered for that getting uh, for that gas outlet area or not that depends on that whether it will be cylindrical in shape or uh, you know that you know channel shape uh, channel type or you can say that rectangular shape uh, of that inlet so based on who is that you have to calculate the uh, hydraulic diameter and based on which you have to calculate what will be the area if it is cylindrical simply that you know that cross sectional area you can calculate if you are having the rectangular uh, cross section then you have to consider their hydraulic diameter or simply that what will be the perimeter and uh, or also you can say that width and breadth of that duct or you know that uh, uh, rectangular uh, you know cross section now all those factors how it will be you know uh, affecting on that collection efficiency you will see that this collection efficiency will be increased with increasing particle size with increasing particle density with increasing inlet gas velocity with increasing cyclone body length with increasing number of gas revolutions with increasing smoothness of the you know cyclone wall also this uh, collection efficiency uh, will be depending on the cyclone diameter gas outlet uh, duct diameter even gas inlet duct diameter or area so in that case collection efficiency will be decreasing if you increase that cyclone diameter if you increase the gas outlet duct diameter or if you increase the gas inlet area so these are the uh, some you know factors which will be you know uh, taken care for the design of that cyclone uh, separator so uh, here you will see that the design of a cyclone separator that will represent a uh, you know compromise uh, uh, version among collection efficiency uh, you know pressure drop and size based you know design so in that case uh, higher efficiency require you will see that higher pressure drop for a particular uh, that you know cyclone separator in that case uh, of course that inlet gas velocity will be more higher because your higher pressure uh, will be required there and in that case uh, uh, larger sizes that means here you will see that sometimes you have to increase the body length of that you know cyclone separator so to get that higher efficiency of that you know cyclone separator you have to increase the body length of that you know cyclone and also you have to increase the pressure drop just by increasing the inlet gas velocity also uh, there will be a certain limit of that you know gas pressure drop to be followed that also uh, depends on that uh, you know capacity of that cyclone separator also load also you can say that material strength so cyclone uh, pressure drops generally to be maintained or you can say that followed within a certain range it is generally 250 to 4000 pascal there and then uh, there will be a certain standard cyclone design based on which you can you know procure that cyclone separator for your you know application so in this case optimum uh, dimensions required to uh, specify a tangential entry reverse flow cyclone which are shown in this diagram in this case you will see that number of revolution that will be you know followed 
just by guessing that you know what uh, actually uh, flow rate of the gas will be there how that gas will be making that you know outer vortex that will be solved based on that you know efficiency and also other physical uh, and you know geometrical variables so in that case number of revolutions that the you know uh, gas makes in the outer vortex can be approximated by you know equation number 13 okay so where the dimensions are shown in the figure so here you will see that uh, uh, cyclone dimensions that is optimal operating condition you can say you can design in such a way that uh, standard design of that cyclone uh, separator would be like this here bc as shown in the picture the bc will be equal to dc by 4 where this is the you know diameter of this you know cyclone body here and uh, you will see that uh, BC is basically that you know entry uh, duct you know uh, length here so it will be DC by 4 and DE here you will see that core region through which that gas will be you know coming out from that cyclone separator the diameter is DE that will be equal to DC by 2 and uh, AC that AC is uh, basically what that uh, here uh, this entry of this you know duct that is height of this you know entry region of that duct uh, it will be you know dc by 2 and lc is the length of this you know body of this you know the cyclone uh, separator it will be two times of that you know diameter of that cyclone and sc is shown here sc here this is the length sc this uh, portion which part of this you know that central core up to depth which depth it will be you know uh, kept inside that you know cyclone uh, separator so it will be you know uh, sc which will be you know one eighth of dc and zc is basically that conical region of that cyclone part the length is zc it is generally twice of that you know diameter of this you know cyclone and zc is the you know outlet duct uh, of that particle that will be basically one fourth of that dc so this is the uh, standard dimensions of the cyclones and also you can assess this uh, you know cyclone efficiency based on some empirical uh, correlations that empirical correlations are developed based on that experimental data and uh, here in this case uh, Leith and uh, Leach 1972 they have suggested one uh, empirical equation uh, for the prediction of collection efficiency of this cyclone separator and they have uh, done uh, or they have suggested this correlation based on the velocity profile in a cyclone okay in that case they uh, considered that that uh, the particles should not that uh, adhere strictly to the uh, ideal uh, form of that cyclone so in that case that that particles may not be uh, having that uh, that ideally uh, separated uh, in uh, well form that means here you can say that uh, the particles uh, will not be having that uniformly mixed inside the separator or there will be no you know uh, that certain fashion or flow pattern of that you know particles inside the you know cyclone separator there will be randomly motion there will be no uh, uniform distribution of that uh, you know particles inside the bed so that is why based on that you know uh, in, uh, experimental data they have developed this semi empirical equation uh, it is not that from that you know basic uh, you know mass balance or energy balance equation here so they have uh, considered that the general form of the velocity profile inside the you know cyclone that will be equal to uh, u theta into r to the power n that will be equal to constant here n is a constant here some you know co coefficient that may be very uh, according to that operating condition and uh, according to this you know condition and after derivation here it is not given this derivation so they finally uh, you know obtain this you know final form of you know uh, efficiency equation as uh, an uh, you know empirical form as eta into dp that will be equal to 1 minus exponent of minus m into dp to the power n 
here this uh, capital N is basically 1 by 1, 1 plus N. This N is basically a coefficient which depends on that some operating condition like uh, you know temperature of the system at which temperature this operation will be done and also what will be the diameter of that you know uh, cyclone that also effect on this uh, you know coefficient n. So, that you know diameter of this you know uh, cyclone will affect that you know velocity profile inside the cyclone that is why they have considered that this uh, uh, u theta into r to the power n should be constant where n will be as a function of dc and temperature. So, from equation number 7 in you can get this you know uh, value of uh, you know coefficient n. And also another important factor it is called m this m is uh, also that empirical constant here is given in equation number 15 and this uh, uh, factor also depending on that operating condition like what will be the flow rate, what will be the diameter of this uh, you know uh, cyclone, what will be the density of the particle and also what will be the effective viscosity of that you know uh, uh, particle laden gas that is entering to the cyclone. And also it depends on that you know empirical constant that is coefficient uh, small n here as given in equation number 17. So, uh, you will see that this empirical equation of this you know collection efficiency depending on that physical property as well as geometry of the cyclones. So, once you know that geometry and operating conditions you will be able to calculate from this equation what will be the collection efficiency. Let us do an example from this theory of that uh, collection efficiency of this cyclone. So, in this case uh, consider a cyclone uh, having a W that will be equal to 4 meter and Q volumetric flow rate of the gas is 20 meter Q per second. Uh, inner and outer radii of 0 0.5 meter and 1 meter respectively and an angle of you know turn of uh, 12 pi. So, assume that the particle size range of interest is from 1 to 30 micrometer and that the particles have a density of 2 gram per centimeter cube. The relative dimensions of the cyclones are these given in cyclone dimensions earlier and in this case assume that temperature will be 293 K. So, you have to calculate what will be the efficiency of the cyclones either based on that theoretical uh, you know equation for the cyclone efficiency or collection efficiency or by Lich and Lith uh, correlations that is given in equation number 15. So, by those two equations you will be able to calculate what will be the efficiency. Now, if you substitute the value of given you know parameters here in this problem, you will see that uh, this efficiency will be depending on the particle diameter. Here particle diameter is not given to you, rather you can get all other parameters. So, if you substitute all other parameters except dp, you will get this equation number 9 only in terms of dp along with other coefficient. Whereas, numerical or empirical uh, value of e equation 15 based on the equation of 15 also it will be a you know function of diameter dp. So, if we uh, calculate this efficiency by changing the diameter of the particle then what would be the actually profile of that you know efficiency. Now, it is shown here in this you know slide that if we change that particle diameter from 0 to 30 you will see that the efficiency based on that equation number 9 it will be coming as you know that like this. Whereas, from the empirical equation you can get this efficiency like this. So, both the cases you will see that the efficiency will be different whereas, at a certain particle diameter there will be a you know same. So, within a certain you will see that within a certain you know range of those you know uh, you know particle diameter you will see that the efficiency of that cyclones 
assessing by these two model equations will be different. So, it is better to follow that theoretical model instead of you know that empirical model there. Okay. So, empirical model will give you that certain fashion of that you know certainly you will say that after a certain particle diameter that efficiency will be you know constant. But it is not expected because that theoretical model that always it will be a certain you know radial condition there is certain you know geometrical uh, you know condition uh, and also other uh, factors energy whatever it will be there uh, uh, distribution inside that uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, separator and also that you know uh, uh, you will see that uh, that uh, uniformity of that you know particle uh, movement inside the bed will be uh, there. So, based on those consideration of profile of that particles movement inside the bed, the theoretical model as per 9 equation number 9 it will be uh, followed. Whereas, you will see if there are more than you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you will see that uh, or, or you can say there are more uh, variables, you know, simultaneously affecting on that efficiency of that, you know, uh, 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 you know, that cyclones. So, in that case, uh, uh, it is better to follow that empirical equations because here these uh, empirical equations will you know uh, give you the overall you know value. In that case uh, you know uh, just uh, you know uh, 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 you know averaging of all other factors uh, either you know mixing characteristics or you know uniformity of the you know particles or other you know uh, uh, properties of the you know particles physical property or other you know uh, thermodynamic properties of the uh, particles if they are affecting on that case. So, it will be better to use this than uh, empirical model instead of that theoretical model. But theoretical model sometimes it is very difficult to consider that some other you know operating variables. So, in that case uh, more operating variables where there will be involving and also if it is a very complex system inside that you know uh, uh, cyclones so uh, in that case uh, you know empirical model will be more accurate to predict that collection efficiency. Then another one separation by centrifuge here also you will see that it uses uh, the centrifugal force to separate particles that contained in a solution here you will see the solution will be considered here. The particles are segregated depending on their size, shape, density and also the speed. The mixer is separated through spinning here, here you will see that this uh, you know animation that uh, the solid particles will be uh, you know allowed to enter to that you know basket spinning basket you will see that inside and that basket will be you know rotating at a uh, certain rotational speed. And during that rotational speed, you will see that the particles will be, you know, segregating uh, at the wall, and uh, you will see that uh, along the wall of that, uh, you know, uh, centrifuge, you will see that uh, there will be some membrane uh, uh, through which that liquid will be passed, whereas that solid particles will retain on that membrane surface. So during that centrifugal action, you will see that liquid will be, you know, passing through that pores of the membrane, which is attached the side of that you know centrifuge whereas uh, you know uh, higher than the pore size the materials will be retained on the one side of this mem membrane which will be taken out from this you know collector. So, in this case uh, the centrifuge also will be acting based on that centrifugal action uh, which will be acting on the particle and uh, uh, it will give you that you know uh, uh, that separation based on that retaining of that particles after stacking on the surface of the membrane here in the centrifuge. Here also you will see some factors which will be uh, influencing that centrifugation, the density of uh, both the solvent and the solution you can say which are being used along with the particles and also distance of the suspended particles displaced from their original position and also you will see the temperature of medium, viscosity of medium, speed of rotation of the centrifuge, these are the factors that will be affecting. And also the centrifuge uh, consists of a rotor enclosed in a you know centrifugal uh, you know uh, uh, separator. There you will see that uh, 
you will see that there will be certain you know uh, electric motor to be uh, acted upon uh, based on which that you know uh, centrifugal action uh, will be generated and the centrifuge uses that centrifugal force in order to differentiate between the different phases of varying densities. The centrifugal force is observed to uh, be a uh, you know uh, uh, to be to be proportional to the you know rotational uh, rate of the rotor. The centrifugal acceleration uh, you will see that makes the suspended particles move in a tangential direction towards the outward direction there. Here in this case you will see that the technique of that centrifugation is dependent on the fact that if we you know turn any object at a steady uh, angular velocity that is moving across a circular motion it is subjected to an outward directed force say f here. So, what is that force centrifugal force f that will be equal to m omega square r and the gravitational force will be mg and the separation factor which can be obtained from these two force that will be regarded as s which will be basically ratio of this centrifugal force to the gravitational force and this is uh, obtained just by dividing these two force. Uh, after substitution uh, of their values here. So, finally, it will be coming as u square by rg. So, this is your separation factor. So, based on this separation factor, you will be able to calculate what will be the separation efficiency. Okay. Now, let us do an example here. Uh, suppose a centrifuge of diameter 0 0.2 meter in a pilot plant that rotates at a speed of 50 hertz in order to achieve effective separation if the centrifuge is you know scaled up to a diameter of 1 meter in the chemical plant and the same separation factor is to be achieved, what is the rotational speed of the scaled up centrifuge? So here uh, you have to calculate the rotational speed of the scaled up centrifuge. So, here the separation factor what is that omega square r by g. So, in this case since uh, you are scaling up this uh, you know centrifuge, so there you have to keep that ratio that is separation factor will be same that means ratio of centrifugal force to the gravitational force to be constant. So, in that case we can write here w or omega 1 square r 1 that will be equal to omega 2 square into r 2. So, from which uh, we can get uh, sorry omega 2 that will be equal to root over omega 1 square r 1 by r 2. Here omega is basically the rotational speed. So, omega uh, 1 it is given to you and also r 1 is given to you r 2 also it is given. So, as per those values if you calculate you can get this omega 2 will be equal to 22.36. Okay. So, if you scale it up, your rotational speed of the scaled up centrifuge will be 22.36 rps. Okay. So, I think you understood that the particle separation by cyclone separator and centrifuge and what are the uh, what are their basic uh, principle and also how to calculate the efficiency of the you know collection of that particles by that centrifuge as well as you know uh, that cyclone separator. So, we will discuss more about this uh, particle separation by other mechanism. In the next lecture, we will try to discuss about the particle separation by electrostatics precipitator. So, thank you for giving attention. Have a nice day.